My, my name is Elad Liv. I'm a platform engineer from AppsFire, and I've been there for the last uh, two and a half years. Uh, I love dis distributed system and databases, and I've been doing it for a while. I like to call myself an RSS junkie because I always open my morning reading my RSS feed. On today's talk, we are going to see some of the unique challenges that AppsFire is facing. We are going to see what was the motivation to make this kind of move. Um, what was involved in the migration process itself? What was the archi architecture that we chosen? And uh, for the end, we are going to see a small retrospective about the two years of uh, using GitLab, because actually, this migration happened uh, two years ago. So what is AppsFile? AppsFile is a mobile attribution and analytics platform. We basically app help app marketeers to get better decision on the running campaign using the data for, that we measure for them. If you have a mobile device, you probably have AppsFlyer SDK installed by uh, one of our clients. Uh, we are currently installed on 90% of the devices in the world, and we are trusted by uh, the worst best companies like Slack, HBO, Alibaba, and Walmart. <clears throat> This graph can represent our uh, incoming traffic uh, growth, but can also represent the amount of enge engineers that we hire, the amount of microservices that we have, and so more. We are facing with more than one, mi one million incoming HTTP requests a second, which uh, sum up into uh, 90 billion events per day. We have crazy amount of projects and microservices in our system, and we have more than 300 developers in the R&D organization. So what did we have before, before GitLab? Um, due to historical reasons, we didn't start with GitLab or GitHub. We actually started with Bitbucket, and we, we, we used the hosted solution. Uh, our founders decided to go with uh, Mercurial because it was just much more easier to go uh, faster with it because they thought that the command line that Mercurial is providing is much simpler than the Git one. So why did it, why we decided to move? <clears throat> First, we didn't want to stay in a hosted solution. Um, as our cr company grows, the, the demands of our clients are growth as well. We couldn't put ourselves in the risk of uh, opening one of our repositories to the outside world. It happened to us more than once with the minor repositories, but it was just too easy to do it on a hosted solution. So we want a solution that will sit inside our VPC. Latency. From time to time, we face latency from the Bitbucket service. Some of them did happen because of our network configuration, but it started to cause our builds to fail, and it's something that we cannot live with. <clears throat> Limitation. Bitbucket is limiting you um, to 1,000 calls per hour, per hour <clears throat> which it, and it was really easy to, to pass it. So what did we try? <clears throat> We did try to, create, to use a self-hosted Bitbucket solution, but it was just a closed source. You couldn't really know what is going on inside of it. If you are facing a bug, you didn't, you, you didn't have the ability to know if it's something that happened because of uh, your configuration or it's something that is wrong with the product itself. It just felt like a black box. We considered uh, of using a GitHub Enterprise Edition, but uh, because everybody basically know how to use GitHub, but uh, it was really really costly, and we and it gave us a minimum ROI. <clears throat> so why GitLab? We decided to go with GitLab because of a few reasons. The first one is the GitLab growth. Uh, GitLab uh, has shown a, a great growth and maturity over the years. It's um, de facto became the most DevOps-friendly product out there and got adopted by more and more companies. We really appreciate the uh, transparency approach that GitLab is taken and uh, Everything in GitLab is basically public as default. You can see uh, the issue tracker, you can see the code itself, and many, many more. Um, 
I highly recommend to read the uh, PagerDuty onboarding uh, uh, notebook that GitLab has. It's uh, both education, uh, edu educating, and you can also uh, learn about uh, a lot about the GitLab organization itself. <clears throat> to sum it up, GitLab was the best fit for us. So the migration process. Sorry. OK, the migration process. <clears throat> Uh, during the migration process, we ask ourselves some key questions. First, API support. There's a lot of things that happening during the builds on our uh, services, and we wanted to make sure that the new uh, GitLab API really contains all the endpoints that we need to make those decisions. Architecture. We are a growing startup, and we are in a hyper-growth situation. How we create an architecture that will send up 10x from today? Education. Can you change your developer's main tool? <clears throat> tooling and integration. Do we have a sufficient tooling to make this move seamlessly? So let's dive in. During the migration, we had a few things in mind. We have to save history, commits, and tags, and we need to do it in the most fast and efficient way possible. After a short research, we find a tool uh, which is called Fast Export. You can see the URL down there if you want to use it. <clears throat> uh, this tool is basically taking uh, a Mercurial uh, repository and convert it into a Git one. We started with a few in Teams repositories, and we saw that it's working well. But now, how do we scale it? How, we, how do we move our entire repositories to GitLab? <clears throat> We decided to create a tool, a tool that will help us to do this move um, by providing a self-service tool to our R&D organization. Uh, the tool was a one-liner, so it was just easy to use it. It was idi idiot-proof, so no one ca could make a mistake. Uh, it keep everyone in sync using a designated Slack channel, as you can see in the picture. And lastly, it was really safe. You cannot override someone else a repository by mistake. The basic flow of the, of the tool was like this. <clears throat> First, we check if the repository ex already exists in GitLab. Then we notify the right team using a Slack channel. We close the old repository to writes in Bitbucket, and we create the, the repository in GitLab. We are conver converting the, the repository from Mercurial to Git, and then we push it to GitLab. At that the end, we log it into the, uh, into the channel that I showed before. I want to focus on one thing here, this one. It's really, really um, uh, important to close the old repository to writes in Bitbucket service, because it happened to us more than once that developer uh, used this tool to migrate his repository from Bitbucket to GitLab but other developer didn't know that the repository was moved. So you don't want to get into this uh, split burn scenario, and, and I suggest you always close the, the old repository in Bitbucket so uh, everyone will push to the right uh, place. <clears throat> During the migration, we got some additional benefits from it. First, we had the ability to do a small cleanup we found out a lot of dead services and a lot of the repository that no one is using. So we had a chance to download them and just upload it to S3 to store it for the future. And second, uh, everyone basically take a part in the process. We build our developer trust in the platform group. To sum this part up, let's see what helped us. First, that we create a self-serve self tool. We couldn't do it alone, and we needed the help of our uh, R&D organization. Second, the transparency. Everyone could, could saw the process as it goes. We build our developer trust. We try to make sure that everyone is aware of the benefits of moving to GitLab. And at the end, uh, we set deadlines. I know it's not the, uh, the nicest thing to do, but we had to put a deadline to the migration. <clears throat> Education. As I said earlier, a big part of the migration was ed education. 
We try to make sure that everything is covered and everything is well documented. At AppSwire, we're using Guru to document uh, internal uh, things in the organization. And as you can see, we created several uh, documents. For example, uh, we created a document for issues that could uh, come up from the migration in Jen and Jenkins. We created one uh, with basic configuration and so on. <coughs> Sorry. AppsWire is giving all the developers uh, a free access to Plua site. So we found out two good courses and we sent it to our developers in order to strengthen their knowledge. <clears throat> Another resource that, that I will highly recommend is this one, uh, which can be used as a cheat sheet, uh, pun intended. Uh, it's just a website that uh, have like uh, a lot of edge cases that could happen using the the Git uh, repository, uh, Git uh, command line, sorry, and how to solve it. <clears throat> now we are moving to the interesting part. We asked ourselves, how many application servers do we need? Uh, should we use EFS? Should we use NFS? How can we make it highly available? What is the best solution for DR? And lastly, how, we, how do we back up the GitLab? This is the architecture that we came out with. As you can see, a developer is basically reaching to a Route 53 uh, address, which has a console uh, service behind of it. This uh, console service is built from two uh, GitLab instances. We use the managed service uh, for Elasticsearch, for the fuzzy search. We use uh, RDS as a database, and we use, use our own Redis uh, for caching with the Redis Sentinel. <coughs> And I want to focus on one thing, which is this one, the EFS. Uh, at first, we thought that uh, we can save our souls from using the old rusty NFS servers and just use EFS. We thought that EFS did a long run since uh, AWS launched the service, and we thought that it will be fit for us. Apparently, we was wrong, because EFS uh, is not handling well with uh, tiny files like uh, Git is creating. So um, at first it worked real well, but after a major part of our developers moved to, to GitLab, we saw that uh, things start to break. And as always, it happened on Friday night. <clears throat> so eventually we did uh, use uh, NFS with NFS replication. And uh, I want to focus on one uh, more cool thing that we did. Uh, we have a daily restore, actually hourly restore to S3 with a replication, but we also have a daily restore to a Google Cloud Platform. Um, it, bo it both allows us to actually test our uh, backups, but also we have a, a separate uh, GitLab instance waiting on other uh, cloud provider, which really help us to be cloud agnostic. You all know the phrase, if a tree falls in a forest and no one is in a row to hear it, does it make a sound? So my version of it is, if a backup is taken without anyone who will start test it, does it count as a backup? So always test your backups. <clears throat> Self-serving tooling. Like I said before, the first tool that we created was the migration tool. But we also created a lot of other tools uh, in order to support this migration. We created a, a small uh, one-liner um, that, uh, that we actually built based on a, a request from a, one of our teams. They wanted the ability to create, uh, to connect their repository with Slack. So we created a one-liner that will do it uh, really simply. <clears throat> uh, and like I said, we, we set deadlines for the migration. In order to keep uh, thin things in track, we created another schedule task that uh, basically took all the projects from Bitbucket and all the projects from GitLab and uh, check which repository uh, migrated to GitLab. 
uh, after the, the process finished and uh, they had the, the list of the repositories that they didn't move yet to GitLab, we post it on the relevant uh, team channel, as you can see. For example, uh, hey, data team, uh, you didn't move uh, those services, and uh, you need to do it as fast as possible. So basically, we created some kind of shame list. <coughs> Sorry. Um, another, another cool thing that we did is to create an in-house GitLab API wrapper. During the migration, we saw that um, we have a lot of code duplication in our services. Uh, in AppSphere uh, Platform Group, we write code in Ruby, in Python, in Go, uh, in Bash, and so on. And we saw that we have a lot of dis these duplications. We saw that a lot of people just implement uh, their way to, uh, for example, to authenticate to Vault. Uh, to manipulate the GitLab API paging and to filter the payload and so on. So we decided to create a central page that will uh, contains all the related metadata that we need. We decided to create a wrapper. And not those kind of wrapper, this kind of wrapper. Uh, we created a central place that will contain all the uh, GitLab uh, metadata um, as you can see, all our services and uh, builds are talking to this uh, to this uh, service. Um, it ha it's updated by uh, using uh, GitLab system hooks, which is really really a cool component of uh, GitLab. Um, and we use Redis as a cache layer. We also had an ske uh, internal scheduler layer that tech that uh, detect uh, data integrity. <coughs> You can all see the, the system hooks that uh, GitLab can post. You can find it in the documentation. You can do like crazy stuff with it. And it's, uh, it's really easy to debug it using the UI itself. It's, it's really amazing. <clears throat> and if you want to read the full uh, technical blog about uh, what did we do and how did we do it, you can visit our uh, blog post. <clears throat> and lastly, um, we have the ability to see if everything that uh, we did really uh, was uh, good for uh, our growth. Um, today at AppSphere, we are using uh, GitLab for uh, many, many things. We actually, a lot of teams uh, ditch other products like Jira and started to man to um, to manage their task inside GitLab, which is really amazing. But we did face uh, two bugs that I want to, dis to show you uh, today. The first one is this bug, which is uh, um, already uh, actually still exists. It's still open. Uh, one of them was uh, because of the, the restores that we are doing to GCP. Uh, we found out that while we are making those restores, uh, GitLab just take the repository di uh, directory and move it aside and call it uh, repository.all. Uh, some kind of timestamp. As, any, as, as you can guess, uh, after some uh, certain time, uh, the disk space uh, became uh, not available. <coughs> we solve it by um, creating a small script that will clean it. To, will, that will clean it, but. Um, Fortunately, this issue is still open. Another one is this one, which uh, already fixed by GitLab. We found out that um, uh, while taking a backup, uh, some of the developers continue to push code to the uh, repository that just been backup. So we've, we face a lot of error, like file change as we read it. So uh, GitLab solved it by uh, announcing the, the a, a GitLab backup strategy. So we just use the strategy copy, and it's, it solved the problem. And uh, that's it. Thank you all. And uh, you can find me here if you have any questions. Thank you. <laughs>